Hello, I'm Tom Varner and welcome to Adventures in TV Land. For today's adventure, I've come to Southern Indiana to see the Lincoln Boyhood National Memorial. Although Lincoln lived most of his life in Illinois, he lived most of his formative years in southern Indiana. Now this is a place I've always wanted to come to, being from Illinois and I having attended college in Indiana, but I just never made it. And so I am here today and we're gonna go check it out. There's this billboard on either side of the Memorial Visitor Center here. This first relief is of Kentucky, 1809 to 1816. And the quote above says, and having thus chosen our course without guile and with pure purpose, let us renew our trust in God. The quote on top here is to do with all which may achieve and share us a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. Second relief. Indiana, 1816 to 1830. And the quote above says, labor is the great source from which nearly all, if not all human comforts and necessities are drawn. The quote above here says, surely each man has a strong motive now to preserve our liberties as each had then to establish them. This release says, and now he belongs to the ages. The quote says, and that government of the people, by the people, and for the people, should not perish from the earth. The Lincoln Boyhood Home has been designated a National Historic Landmark. The site possesses national significance as the location of Thomas Lincoln Farm and the gravesite of Nancy Hanks Lincoln. President Abraham Lincoln lived at the farm between the ages of 7 and 21, 1960. The quote above here says, We must not be enemies. Though passion may have strained it, it must not break our bonds of affection. And Lincoln and Illinois is this relief from 1830 to 1861. The quote says, It will have been proved that among free men there can be no, no successful appeal from the ballot to the bullet. This quote says, Have faith that right makes might, and in that faith let us do, let us to the end dare to do our duty as we understand it. In the final relief, Washington, 1861. 1865, I hold that in cont contemplation of universal law and of the Constitution, the union of the estates is perpetual. This talks about the death. White snake root was the plant that gave Nancy Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln's mom, milk sickness. She died of it. This is a memorial of Lincoln's death and his tomb in Illinois in Springfield. There's a dried up piece of snake root, the plant that ultimately was responsible for killing Nancy Lincoln. This desk was made by Abraham Lincoln's father, Thomas Lincoln, and it was believed that Lincoln studied at it. Here are some handwritten letters by Abraham Lincoln on display in this case.
This is the Abraham Lincoln Hall. It's used for lectures, running it out for weddings, other events. It was built to, to resemble church at the time. Lincoln was a boy here in Indiana. This set marker here says you are facing the wooded Nolan, which sleeps Nancy Hanks Lincoln, mother to the president who lived in the Scooser environment during the former years of his life from 1816 to 1830. Beyond the north is marked the side of the humble ca log cabin where she led him for a little while along the path of greatness. This is the gravesite of Nancy Lincoln, President Lincoln's, Abraham Lincoln's mother. Now the thing is, they don't know exactly where she was buried. They just know it was somewhere roughly around here. Some of these graves actually have the graves of the people that were, had died and were buried, others they know we're buried somewhere around here, they just don't know where the graves actually were. So the trail regulations are no smoking at the farm, no alcoholic beverages, no bicycles on the trail, and keep your pets on the leash. Now that's something I've never seen before. A railroad crossing in the middle of a park. We are now approaching the edge of the Thomas Lincoln Farm. This is a uh, billboard, a marker certifying that this was the site of the actual cabin where the Lincolns lived. And there it is. Those bronze planks and stones was the site of the Lincoln Cabin here in Indiana. I know people who their bedrooms are bigger than this entire cabin. And those are kids. Remember what I said earlier about the train tracks in the middle of the park? Well, there's a train coming through, I guess. It's pretty amazing to think that for most of his formative years growing up, this is where Abraham Lincoln lived. Right here. Right there. He lived there. Amazing. Now this cabin here on the inside has been designed to resemble what a somewhat little bit larger cabin at the time of Lincoln. I mean, as you can see, it's bigger than Lincoln's cabin was, but what it looked like and would have looked like at that time period. Some chickens are in the chicken coop. Now we're headed on the Lincoln Spring Trail. And there it is. The Lincoln Spring. The 
a spring well. This is the well. Probably Abe, when, many times when he was here, to help his mom and dad had to run to get water. For the most part, this is where they got all their water from. This well right here. Now the stones are not the same, of course, but this was the spring from where they got their water. The plaque reads, the Lincolns carried their water from this spring, 1860 to 1830, erected by the Lincoln Club of Southern Indiana. Okay, to get back to the visitor center, we're gonna walk the trail of 12 stones. Now, the 12 stones along this trail are taken from 12 different places connected in some way to Abraham Lincoln's life. And so we're going to go and follow this trail and look up stones way back to the parking lot and visitor center. This stone here is the first marker. It is a stone taken from the birthplace of Abraham Lincoln in Hodgenville, Kentucky, where he was born February 12th, 1809. Earlier today, we saw the site of where the Lincoln cabin once stood. And from 1917 until 1934, this stone, the second stone, marked the location of that cabin until they were able to ex excavate and found out actually where it was. And the plaque reads, from 1917 to 1934, this stone marked the site of the cabin a few hundred feet west of here, where Lincoln lived the impressionable years of his life. Here's the third stone. This stone was taken from the foundation of the Jones store in which Abraham Lincoln worked while he lived here in Indiana. The tablet reads, this rock was part of the Jones store at Jonesboro, three miles west of here, associated with Lincoln's early manhood. Now on their way, moving from Indiana to Illinois, the Lincoln stopped for a day in Vincennes, Indiana, and it was there that Lincoln saw a printing press for the very first time. The marker reads, This stone from the foundation of the Western Sun and Centennial Advertiser, Vincennes, Indiana, where Abraham Lincoln, en route to Illinois from Indiana in March of 1830, first saw a printing press. The fifth stone here is from the Lincoln Berry Store in New Salem, Illinois. I revisited New Salem and made a video about it. And the placard reads, the stone was part of the foundation of the Berry Lincoln Store in New Salem, Illinois. Now these bricks, which are the sixth stone on the route, are from the Lexington, Kentucky home of Mary Todd, who, married to Lincoln, who was married to Lincoln on November 4th, 1842. This stone was one time part of the White House. The placard reads, the stone was part of the White House at Washington, D.C., where President and Mrs. Lincoln lived from March 4, 1861 until his death, April 15, 1865. Alright, this stone here is from Anderson Cottage which Lincoln was basically their summer White House. It was three miles outside of the city during the Civil War, and he spent a lot of his time during the summers there. The placard reads, This stone from the Anderson Cottage National Soldiers' Home, Washington, D.C., where President Lincoln wrote the Emancipation Proclamation, September 22, 1862. This boulder 
is from Gettysburg. It says this rock from where President Lincoln stood when he delivered the Gettysburg Address, November 19, 1863. This stone is from the old Capitol building where Lincoln delivered his second inaugural address, March 4th, 1865. That address was when Lincoln said, with malice toward none, with charity for all. I'm not for sure how the rest of it goes, but just those free, just those few brief lines. I wish more people in our politics and society had no malice towards anyone and gave, had a charitable heart towards everyone. This is a piece of the stone pillar that was part of the front porch of the Peterson house, which was the house from which President Lincoln was taken after he was shot in Ford's Theater and in which he died. April 15th, 1865. And the 12th and final stone on the trail is this massive piece of granite. This was originally, it was a piece of granite specifically ordered to be left over after the building of Lincoln's tomb and the designer, the carver, whatever, he made it into a headstone to be used as the headstone for Lincoln's mother, who at that time, though they knew kind of where she was buried, had no headstone. And for many years, that's what it served as. The headstone for Nancy Lincoln. The plaque reads, in memoriam, the stone from Lincoln's tomb in Springfield, Illinois, was presented by a grateful people in tribute to his mother. I am now at the grounds of the Lincoln State Park, or the Little Pigeon Primitive Bab Baptist Church stands. And it is in the small cemetery here where Abraham Lincoln's sister and premature niece or nephew are buried. The work is, there's been a little bit of work done on the building, but there's been a church on the spot since 1816. This bulletin board here talks a little bit about the cemetery and the church. The church that stands here now is the third church on the property. The first church was a log cabin church that Abraham Lincoln and his father Thomas helped build. And here is the grave of Sarah Lincoln Grigsby, older sister of Abraham Lincoln. She died in childbirth January 20th, 1828. The grave next to her is her husband, Aaron, who just died three short years after Sarah in 1831. Being from Illinois, I of course have visited Lincoln's tomb, where Mary Todd and Abraham Lincoln and their, most of their children are buried. About two years ago, I had a chance to stop and visit the grave of Thomas Lincoln and his wife, Sarah, second wife, who was Abraham Lincoln's mother-in-law, and Thomas was his father. Today, I have now visited Abraham Lincoln's mother's grave and his sister as well. Well, this has been another adventure in TV land where we visited the Abraham Lincoln Boyhood National Memorial in Southern Indiana. Thank you for watching. If you've liked this video, hit the like button. If you disliked, hit the dislike button. Subscribe to my channel for further content and ring that bell for email notifications. And if there's some place that you would like to see me visit, 
leave a comment in the comment section. And if you'd like to support the Adventures in TV Land, you can do so by going to buy me a coffee and making a donation there or become a member there as well. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, that's a wrap.